Hello and welcome to this 1st of May 2022 Newcastle West Circuit Sunday Shorts Time of Worship. I've called this week's Sunday Short Easter Waiting, but it might be better described as a time of waiting after Easter. We'll explore what we can do about this time of waiting by looking at the disciples' experience following their revolutionary experience of the very first Easter. The set gospel reading for this Sunday is of the resurrected Jesus' visit to some of his disciples at the lakeside when they are back at work trying to catch fish on the Sea of Galilee. Whether you are watching the YouTube video or reading the paper copy of this Sunday Shorts, I hope you will acknowledge the presence of the living Lord Jesus in your home. Know the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you and feel the Heavenly Father's loving arms embracing you. Our call to worship comes from the book of Revelation and are verses from one of the other sets of readings for this Sunday. We join with the angels in heaven in praising both the risen Lord Jesus and his Father who sits on the throne. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. We pray together our opening prayers of adoration, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Lord Jesus, Master of miracles and mystery, you come walking to us on the beach of the morning. We come before you at first light to worship the one who has made heaven and earth and all that are in them. You lift us up when life seems too pressing in its demands, when nets are empty and spirits low. You point us in the right direction when we walk on the wrong roads. As we worship, make the scales fall from our eyes to see you as you are. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for ever. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from the last chapter of John's Gospel. So it is the culmination of what he wants to tell us about the life of Jesus it's also what John wants to share with us about Jesus' last words to us, his followers. Matthew and Mark also tell us about Jesus' meeting with his disciples in Galilee. And Mark and Luke further record Jesus' ascension. But for John, what we are to hear now are Jesus' final words to both Peter and each one of us. So let's hear the reading from John 21 verses 1 to 19. Jesus appears to seven disciples. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't healing the net because there were so many fish in it. 
Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work. He jumped into the water and headed for the shore. The others stayed in the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only about a hundred yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went to board and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked him the question the third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you to where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Since Pat and I have retired, we seem to have been many times when we have been waiting. Soon after we moved to Hedden, we submitted plans to the planning department at Morpeth to replace the roof on the kitchen extension of our bungalow. We waited and we waited for a reply. We asked various builders to quote for the work. Most of them never turned up, but those who did, we waited and we waited for their quotation. Similarly with the plumber, I'll be with you next week to look, he said. Three weeks later, it was that he arrived. I can remember Pat's father when he was alive, always unable to leave his flat because he was waiting. Waiting for the insurance man, waiting for the milkman to collect his money, waiting for the nurse to call, waiting for a phone call from the town hall, and so it went on. Sometimes our lives do seem to be a constant time of waiting. I don't need to mention the three letters NHS and their waiting times, do I? It must seem like that to the disciples. In the days after Jesus' resurrection, waiting, if nothing else, may have taught them to be patient. But I believe there were many lessons for us to learn from John's narration of the disciples' post-Easter waiting time. Of these lessons, I've identified at least eight that speak to me. Well, you'll know the story so well. Jesus appeared to the disciples a few times in Jerusalem after his resurrection, but he asked them to wait for him in Galilee. They do wait, and wait, and wait. But Jesus still doesn't reappear. Peter, the impetuous one, decides that enough is enough and he is going back to fishing. From the high mountaintop experience of the resurrection appearance, appearances, he is going back to work. Some of the others join him, but after fishing all night, they catch nothing. Lesson one then, doing impetuous things on your own say so while you wait often leads to disaster or failure. 
In the morning, the disciples see a man on the shore who suggests that they throw their nets on the other side of the boat. Well, they had nothing to lose, so they tried it, only to catch a massive haul of fish. Lesson two. When you make a mess of something, listening to those with more experience or those who offer good advice may lead to success. One of the many things that hit me again and again is the wealth of good advice in the Bible. I once heard a speaker at Easter People several years ago say, many Christians spend more time reading the newspaper than reading the Bible. Wow, that comment spoke to me. There's nothing wrong with keeping abreast of the news, of course, but not at the expense of neglecting God's good news. It is at this point in the boat that John recognises the man on the shore as being Jesus. Recognising Jesus is at the core of our faith. The disciples were literally all at sea, not without a paddle this time, but without their leader. And to broaden the metaphors even further, they were rudderless on the sea of life. As soon as they recognise Jesus, they make a beeline for him. Indeed, Peter was so keen, he leaped into the sea to get back to his master all the quicker. Lesson three then. We too need to recognise Jesus. And when we do, go to meet with him. If we cannot recognise our leader and his actions in our lives, then we cannot truly be called followers of Christ. If we fail to recognise Jesus, we will end up following any Tom, Dick or Harry. Once on the shore, the disciples breakfast together, but Jesus speaks directly to Peter. Jesus asked him, Do you travel, truly love me more than these? This question is at the heart and the core of Peter's future, where Peter's loyalties lay, to Jesus only, or shared with other people or existing commitments. But what applies to Peter applies to us as well, and our futures. Jesus asks us this same question, do you truly love me more than these? Lesson four, Jesus loves us with a love that sent him to the cross of Calvary. Our relationship with Jesus depends on our loving him in return. Love not just for what he has done, but love because we can do no other. Teenagers who fall head over heels in love cannot help themselves because their emotions carry them along. So too with our love of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, if we seek and find his love for us, we are carried along in a reciprocal love for him. If that love for Jesus is missing or has faded, we need to seek it afresh. Peter had denied his Lord three times. So Jesus, as it were, undoes those denials by asking him three times if he loves him. But inherent in these three questions is the fact that Jesus has forgiven Peter for his wrongdoing. Poor old Peter must have been in a cloud ever since his act of treachery. How guilty he must have felt. How relieved when instead of being pulled over the coals for what he had done, Jesus never mentions the event and simply asks Peter if he still loves him. Lesson five then. There is nothing in our lives that Jesus will not forgive. That doesn't mean we don't have to put matters right if physical, material or emotional damage has been caused. Nor does it mean that justice can be ignored. But as far as hurting Jesus is concerned, he keeps on loving us and will forgive our sins. Guilt needs no longer weigh us down. We must learn to accept his forgiveness as permanent and absolute. Forgiveness is something we don't have to wait for. It is like a tap which is forever turned on when we truly ask for forgiveness. To Peter's three replies, Jesus makes three requests. Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and 
feed my sheep. As I reread these three commands, words spoken at my ordination came back to me. In that service, ordinands are reminded what they are called to do. Feed God's lambs, take care of God's sheep and feed them. Various people have tried to define what exactly Jesus meant when he said these words to Peter. But one explanation has expanded my understanding of those words. The lambs are those new to the faith, those who are young Christians and still lost in the wonder of their newfound faith. The time when the attractions of the world are also still large in their minds. The sight of new lambs appearing in our local farms reaffirm this image, full of life, yet so small and vulnerable. Their nurture and well-being is solely dependent on their mothers. Lesson six. We, who are mature Christians, are responsible for looking after and tending the youngsters in the faith, whatever their age in years may be. Don't think those words of Jesus were just for Peter as the potential leader of the church. We are all ministers to others, whether we are ordained or lay. But in addition to this, Jesus told Peter to feed the sheep as well as the lambs and take care of them. The sheep are the older Christians, for they too need to be cared for and fed. So, lesson seven is that we are commissioned to care for and feed mature Christians too. We each need to be spiritual fed by studying God's word and learning from each other. We each need to care for others as pastors, again, whether we are ordained or lay. If we fail in this charge from Jesus, the flock will diminish and disintegrate. The last words we hear from Jesus to Peter in our reading are simply, follow me. Those two words sum up all that has gone before. They identify all we really need to do to accomplish the seven lessons we have learnt from this passage. If we follow Jesus, then the rest will fall into place. If we follow Jesus, then our future will be in his hands and we will reap the reward of knowing that whatever our future and the church's future, then all will be well. Not necessarily a trouble-free life, for Peter too followed Jesus to die on a cross, but a life lived knowing the peace of God in our hearts and with the knowledge that our future is secure in him. So the final lesson, lesson eight is, if all this can be yours by following Jesus, don't carry on waiting. Simply respond to his call to follow me. Amen. So to our prayers of confession, which will lead into our prayers of intercession. Forgiving God, there are times when we have cast our nets and felt so discouraged by what we have caught or haven't caught. We have despaired and stopped trying. Forgiving God, where we have gone wrong, show your healing mercy. There are times when you have shown us where there will be rich rewards for our labours but we have felt so inadequate that we have gone out on our own, ignoring your call, your gentle, persistent questioning. Forgiving God, where we have gone wrong, show your healing mercy. In the stillness of the place where you are, share with your risen Saviour those things you have done which you know were wrong and those times you failed to do what would have been right. Forgiving God, where we have gone wrong, show your healing mercy. 
just as you forgave Peter his denial of you. We too rest in the knowledge of your forgiveness of the things we have done wrong. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now our prayers for others and for ourselves. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Then feed my lambs, he said. Lord, you know that we love you. And we know that we can show you that we love you by loving one another and all the world. We pray for the world where people hunger after justice, long for freedom, crave for peace. Especially at this time, we think of Ukraine. We pray where people are hungry and homeless and destitute. Lord, help us to feed your lambs. In your loving mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for humankind, for those who are ill in body or mind, anxious and afraid, depressed and despairing, for those who are grieving, the lonely, the abused. Lord, help us to tend your sheep. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Again, in the stillness of where you are, share with your risen Saviour those things you have a particular concern for in the world, in this country, in your neighbourhood, in the lives of those you know and love. We pray for ourselves, we who are your followers and friends, asking that we may be filled with your Holy Spirit and given those things that we need to feed the physical, spiritual and emotional hungers of the world around us. Lord, help us to feed your sheep. In your love and mercy, hear our prayer. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this act of worship. We close with a blessing. May the God who knows you better than you know yourself grant you the gift of courage to face the known and the unknown without fear. May the God who loves you better than you love yourself grant you the gift of understanding and acceptance. May the God who forgives you more fully than you can forgive yourselves, more freely than you think you deserve, grant you the gift of release from guilt so you may let go of the past and look to the future unafraid with a brave face, a strong heart and a quiet spirit. Amen. If you are alone or with family members, you may like to share the words of the grace with everyone who has watched this act of worship or read the paper copy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.